hard time begins at Ross Correctional Institution, a place of tough choices and easy mistakes. Find your place, and you might serve your sentence in peace. But just one wrong move can change everything. For one year, National Geographic followed the lives of inmates and officers in the state of Ohio. It's a system bent on making inmates better, filled with convicted felons who might already be worse. Get out of my face. This is a year of hard time. In the state of Ohio, a prison sentence begins with a bus ride. Today, Chaz White and 15 other inmates are making the hour-long journey to Ross Correctional Institution. In a state with over 50,000 people behind bars, Ross is a tough place to do time. And for Chaz White, it's about to become home. Last name and your number. White, 618-662. I've never been incarcerated in my life. Chaz White. I'm trying to keep it from sinking in. This is really going to hurt me. Today is day one of a 20-year sentence. It's his first time in prison, but the 20-year-old already has a sense of what's to come. White. People do say you stay under the radar and you won't get in trouble, but to me, that's not necessarily true. I definitely want to try my best to avoid clicking up or getting to a game while I'm there because I know, I know how I am. It's going to be nothing but peer pressure to get myself into more trouble. At Ross, each inmate will find their own way to do time. And with every choice will be certain consequences. Because here, Trouble is always just around the corner. Stand up. And this afternoon, a fight breaks out in Unit 4A. Floor officers contain the incident and lock down the other inmates. I can't even open my eye. Of the two fighters, one has already gone to segregation. The other is on his way to the infirmary. Somebody came in. I thought he was, you know, he'd been braiding my hair. You know, we'd be talking a little bit. I thought he was cool, you feel me? The reasons behind the fight aren't clear. And despite the vigilance of the officers, survival here can still be a constant battle. With over 2,500 inmates spread over several camps, Ross is a world unto itself. Medium security inmates live on the south side. And to the north is close security, the level reserved for violent offenders, gangs, and disciplinary cases. It's a rough population that needs constant management. You can prevent some things, but you can't prevent everything. We're outnumbered on any given day, 250 to 1. And obviously, you don't have them all behind bars all the time, so you have to have, you know, ability to communicate. Close security is exactly where Chaz White is heading. His first cell assignment is in 1A on the north side. And this is one house, 1A. This is it, my home for the next 20 years, man. With two tiers lined with two-man cells, every dorm is its own community. Inmates are allowed a certain amount of private property, including televisions and lockboxes. I don't know how you open this. There it is. For most of the day, cell doors stay open, giving inmates the freedom to interact. Like you on the block and you see new faces. It was like the same thing. See new faces, you want to see who's looking at you. So you know if you got to get at somebody, they about to get at you. Chaz may be new to prison, but he already has a leg up on the game. I used to sell drugs, not gonna lie to you. Started off with marijuana, then I graduated, as people say, to selling cocaine and crack. I can make 3,200 in about six days. 
His seven-year career hustling drugs ended in January 2009, when he was accused of shooting a friend in the face and the chest and leaving him for dead. He claims there was someone else who did the shooting, but the victim named Chaz as the culprit. When I was in court, after they had read um, every charge guilty, every charge guilty, the judge said, well, Mr. Wright, I sentenced you to 27 and a half years in the Ohio Department of Corrections. When he told me that, I was like, it was like a dream. I didn't believe it. I kind of feel like it's a struggle going on between myself sometimes. I want to look at Ross as there's an opportunity, a positive opportunity waiting there for me. But people here already see it as my life is over with. It's already over with. I got all this time. It's over. Prisons are full of traps and temptations that can make hard criminals even worse. Ohio system tries to step in with schooling and programs intended to help inmates survive prison the right way. But demand for programs is high, so priority goes to the short timers. That puts inmates like Chaz at the bottom of the list and left to their own devices on the tiers. It's a cat and a mouse game because it's my job to follow the rules, and a lot of inmates will tell you it's their job to break them. Chaz already slipped. Before coming to Ross, he spent five weeks at Ohio's orientation prison, where he was illegally trading commissary with other inmates and making threats to anyone who didn't pay up. I was getting my hustle on here also, because I'm used to it, since I was 12. I'm used to hustling. So I kind of got back to my old self, and I wish I, I, wish I didn't do it. That kind of put me back on the street. That's a bad thing. Now, his first move in 1A is a show of confidence. Honestly, I'm not nervous or nothing. I'm calm as on the way. I'm ready. He leaves his cell and hits the tears. I could have sat on my bed, sat in a chair, got in my Bible. I just came out and just sat down, just looking around, feeling everybody out, honestly. My first thing is just to look and see who's looking at me and see who probably I'm getting to with first. There's a lot of people. I could tell you from the first 50 people, I could tell, oh, he's soft. Or I could tell, oh, he ain't no punk. I, I just feel everybody out. You could tell as soon as they walk through the door if they're going to make it or not. You either come in here and it either says Viking or victim. Yeah. North side of the terrace. What's your name? Uh, they call me Chazzy, but call me Lord Chuck Chazzy, don't matter. People riding from different camps or CRC just got here and uh, instantly, it's, who is he? You know, where is he from? What song did he bring down? Uh, I can't 27. Bad, bro, 27. Bro. Flat. If he doesn't gang bang, he's a, probably a target, you know? I'm gonna get into a fight pretty soon. I ain't seen nobody out there my age, or at least around my age, so I know I'm not to prove myself, which is nothing. That's, I mean, I gotta do what I gotta do. He wants to set his reputation fast. Because here at Ross, a new target is born every day. Keep going, back, back, there you go. Put your head up here for me, okay? Donald Smith is much worse for wear following the incident in his unit earlier today. Brian, he's got a laceration in his ear. All right, this is the part that hurts, okay? He's all done. That's so bad. According to him, this wasn't a fight. It was an attack, a full-scale ambush by two other inmates, all for a pair of sneakers. Basically, they was trying to come for my Jordans. Uh, that's what they was coming for. Get my Jordans. Told them, hell nah. I'm not about to uh, let y'all get my shoes. Anything I got in there. I don't know if. They hit me with a lock, bed spring, what it was. But I heard one of the dudes saying, man, hit him with the lock, hit him with the lock. You all right? Yeah. I thought I was going to die for a minute, for real. All right. They try to, they try to get my, uh, my 
my, my shoes, man. I seen him grab my white shoes, so I chased after him. And then that's when we got in the fight in the range. I want to give him my shoes, because that's all I got. The inmate he fought is already in segregation, leaving one other attacker. Smith can only heal and wait and hope justice is served. One week into his 20-year sentence, Chaz White is starting to settle in. This is actually just like a ghetto college campus. Like I'm in college right now, but just full of hoods. Just everybody from everywhere, every part is just here. With one out of 25 residents under correctional supervision, the Ohio prison system is one of the biggest in America. But the state is trying to cut back the numbers with a focus on rehabilitation. Every inmate is required to get a job and work for a small income. Newcomers start off as porters and janitors. But over the years, they can work their way up toward higher skilled jobs with better pay. At Ross, the top tier occupation is building furniture in the prison factory. And the top salary, $80 a month. Now Chaz finds himself starting at the bottom with his first prison job. I'm a porter, I got a porter job, and really that's, I call it the CO's but all you do is clean here. Ain't really nothing too much to the job, just sweep the steps and mop them. Both stairwells, it's in the morning, first shift. So I mean, they won't call it a job, that's on them. With dozens of porters in his dorm alone, Chaz's new job takes only 15 minutes a day to finish and earns him $12 a month. It was that easy. Sweep him up, that's it. All prison salaries are low, so almost everyone improvises. It's an illegal system of barters and trades, known as the hustle. It takes money to survive anywhere you go, even in prison. So if you don't hustle, I mean, you're not gonna die, but you're not gonna live. Well, you get the proverbial, you know, three hots in a cot. You know, that's true, but have you seen the three hots? The system offers the essentials. Three meals a day, basic hygiene, and clothing. The good stuff comes from the inmate commissary. From snack food and soda to name brand shampoo. These are the little extras that make time bearable, bought with money from friends and family on the outside. But those that don't have the resources can always fall back on a hustle. I have to have something to eat. And since I can't afford to go to the store and buy it, I have to hustle it up. You know, it's just like having a second job. In any given dorm, there might be a chef, a tailor, a lawyer. Trial counsel induced Owens. And most are compensated in instant coffee. The currency in prison is coffee. Instead of, instead of packs of cigarettes, they just tell everybody just pays with coffees. Inmates can only buy coffee crystals from the inmate's store, but they parcel them out as currency. At the store, this coffee is on like $2.25, $2.25. That's $4 right here. That's just $4. Coffee is then traded for other items or services. There's dudes in a the joint that got tattoos. So guys tell me what they want, and then just draw it on paper. And that's like my little hustle in the joint. So the thing that sells hot is girls with fat asses, something with a gun, you know what I'm saying? You throw some skulls in there, you know what I'm saying? And it always sells no matter what. I do this because it's kind of hard living off $15 a month. I made a CD case for a guy just so he can carry it around his neck while he works out and stuff. That's what he wanted. People start hearing that you're a tailor you know, the past two weeks, I've been sewing like at least six hours a day. Failure of any of these points renders enforcement of the plea unconstitutional. My niche is basically legal work. 
Um, it's what I do. If you did it as a hustle, you're either number one or number two, because everybody needs a lawyer. You find a jailhouse lawyer, will do research and find that one flaw that'll open that door up for you. So you gotta be bulletproof in prison. And a jailhouse lawyer and a store man are probably the two most important things in prison, in that order. For the inmates with money on their account, the most lucrative hustle is running an underground store from a cell, similar to buying wholesale and selling retail. Running a store means you have all the commissary, you spend your money, and you give guys two coffees for three back, or 10 soups for 15 soups back, and that's how you make your, your money. This is just my store as opposed to the commissary store. I buy extra chips and soups and coffees, and uh, guys get hungry, they come and get them. And I go out here and beat the streets, and I find guys to take the product off my hand and bring it back at an interest rate. And You know, because I don't eat chips myself, but I buy them because other guys eat them. Chaz, a former street hustler, has already found his piece of the action. And here, coffee is like weed. I either be playing spades or just standing by the table with the coffee in my pocket, and everybody know what I do. I sell the coffee. Everybody else, they sell it, but I, I sell real, real, real big shots because I don't drink coffee. I'm selling big shots for the same price they sell them for the little ones, so I'm getting the most business. I buy about five bags of coffee and probably make around close to $100. And we'll keep this booming, that's what I call it, booming. Every hustle is a behind-the-scenes enterprise because in Ohio, trading or bartering of any kind is illegal. Even something small, like selling coffee, can create debt and incite jealousy. Officers try to stay on top of hustles with shakedowns to root out extra commissary and contraband. Just a uh, routine shakedown of the block. Pretty much anything they're not supposed to have. We usually pick a block a day and go through it. Check out all the cells real quick. Despite the prison's efforts, the hustles continue, fueling the underground economy. And where there's an economy, there's also crime. Some people move drugs in prison. Some people run commissary stores in prison. Some people run extortion game in prison. That's what I run. If you don't, you gotta pay me. Everything revolves around me. You gotta pay me. Juice Reynolds is a prison thief. Like a dude just come back from the commissary or whatever. I wait till he get in the cell, right before he shut the door, I come in behind him. You know what time it is. I'm going there with my gloves and my mouthpiece in and handing my laundry bag, like, bag your shit up. Come back, if it ain't filled, I'm gonna have him looking different. <laughs> have him looking different. I, mean, I wouldn't say I was a bad kid, I was just adventurous. Juice Reynolds' life in crime started early. He says that at 13, he stole bikes and cars, then moved on to homes and stores. <laughs> I tell them they know what time it is. Know what time it is. Open up the cash registers. Open up the safe. At 16, he was caught robbing a restaurant at gunpoint, earning himself eight years in close security. What worked for him on the outside, he learned to bring inside the prison walls. I just keep, kept it the same as I was on the streets. Only thing different is I don't got a gun. You know what I'm saying? I use my hands. I guess you have no other way to make money but then to take it from somebody. You know, let's not glorify it and call it a hustle. I mean, a thief is just simply that. He's a thief. It's not a hard job. It's not even a talented job. The dudes like that, you know what I'm saying? They young, they don't know you know what I'm saying? These dudes don't even know how to read. You're gonna know who the thieves are, but that thief got about three or four guys, five guys. He might be in the gang. You know what I'm saying? So he got a, he got his gang rolling with him. There's nothing for them to do but strong arm somebody. Only a strong survive. You know what I'm saying? And I think if I was weak, somebody would do it to me. You know so. I just, you know, I'd rather me doing it to somebody else for, or somebody doing it to me, you know? We all inmates. We all in here for doing something wrong, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I had no sympathy. For guys like Juice, 
This is just part of prison reality. Everyone has to survive, and everyone is fair game. Over in the infirmary, Donald Smith is starting to recover from his attack last week. It's an ironic fate for someone who's here on an eight-year sentence for aggravated robbery. Yeah, I've got people on the street. I don't want to be that no more. I was doing dirt out there on the street, just catching up with me. I'm here to better myself, educate myself. I know a lot of these dudes in here from the street. Like, I let them know I'm not on that stuff, man. You know, that's that stuff. Oh, I know it is calm catching up with me. So we'll find you everywhere, you know, do the right thing. Even out there on the street, try to do the right thing, do the right thing. So we'll find you. Right now, things may be looking up for him. The prison has a name of the possible second attacker, and they've brought him in for investigation. If Juice Reynolds is found guilty of the attack, the punishment could be anything from a stint in segregation to extra charges that could add to his prison time. This could be a major setback for the prison predator. I call it the den of iniquity where violence is respected more than intelligence. You want to do it for real? You want to do it for real? I think so. A person doesn't care whether or not you have intelligence or not. In everyday life in here, it's, it's a matter of a person disliking you for who you are, what you're about, what you look like. I think that uh, they're following. Whether you've got money and another person doesn't have money, you have envy. And envy is the breed of all hate inside of the penitentiary system. The north side of Ross Correctional Institution has some of the hardest felons in Ohio. It's a tough population to manage and an even tougher one to break into. One month into his sentence, Chaz White is finding his way and moving up. His coffee trade is gaining momentum, and he's learning that in prison, money leads to power. I ain't been here a whole month, but I think there's a couple dudes in here that's already jealous of me. Because within my first week, I bought these new pair of shoes down here. These Reeboks. Then um, I bought these sandals, and I bought a, port a pair of Jordans for $60. And now I got new clothes. I got a bunch of new clothes. You don't see me in nothing raggedy no more. Yeah, I, I know some people jealous of me. And I ain't going to lie and make, make myself sound like a king, but I already got followers. The popularity in here is somewhat like the popularity on the streets. Because the store man, or the dude that got all the goodies that everybody want or whatever, is like popular. I'm the youngest dude in here, and all these older dudes are following me just because I'm making this little bit of money. As he rises in status, he's also clicking up with a group of Crips in 1A. Chaz, he's, he, he's real new, so. I can understand him wanting to get his name up. Yeah, the whole time we've been juveniles and Stacey sees potential in Chaz to climb the ranks. You know what I mean? Hey, with him and TK, the blood, they get together, man, it's hell. I like Chaz a lot, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, that's that's like my little homie for real. And uh, But I, he he got a lot of time to do, you know what I'm saying? And uh, he young, you feel me? And he got a lot of time to do. He wants to uh, hurry up and get a name out there for himself. And, um, he wants to really get it established. <laughs> a dorm as tough as 1A is where reputations are made and broken. But not everyone needs a piece of the action. Troy Mary is another recent arrival. But unlike Chaz White, he isn't trying to make a name for himself. After two previous sentences served at Ross, his reputation is set in stone. Ross Correctional Institution is where I've grown up at. I've been involved with the white air and resistance. Been in the hole because of gang-related activity. I've uh, experienced a level of violence that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. His third time here could be a short stint. 
He has a parole hearing coming up that will determine if he can leave prison early. If he slips, he could spend more years in prison. While that may be an incentive to stay clean, for someone like Mary, it's still no guarantee. Drama jumps off. You got, you got the ABs in here. You got blood. You got Crips. You got everything you can think of. If it escalates and these guys get out of control, who's it going to affect? It's going to affect me. If they come my way, do I need to sharpen something up real quick? Um, do I need to get a lock and a sock? What do I need to do, you know what I mean, to protect me? I'm a convict. I just get involved and if things start happening out here that I don't want and it's starting to affect me, I get upset. It's one of those things being institutionalized or whatever you want to call it. It just comes natural to you. They bring the drama inside this cell. That'd be a mistake right there, man. That'd be a mistake. These days, 1A is a minefield. A couple of gang fights have created major tensions on the tiers, leaving both inmates and officers on high alert. We work here every day. We can tell when guys are not doing what they normally do every day. You just, you can feel tension sometimes. It's two people that were two, from two different cities, had animosity because of something that they were representing, and uh, names got called and apologies didn't get said, so it got deep real quick. Usually it'd be gang fights, city fights, Columbus versus Cleveland or Cleveland versus Cincinnati. You definitely don't want to let things get out of hand. It can explode into a lot bigger things than just two guys fighting. It's real calm. You know, you got these guys around here playing chess, checkers, games, you know, acting See, like, acting like they all fun and games, yeah, but, but it ain't. in the twinkling of an eye, you can die. For someone like Chaz, an unstable atmosphere can be an opportunity. I got in one half of fights since I've been here. I didn't like it. It was too quick, bro. I don't fight. Chaz is looking to fight. Like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what he wants. God, we need two more. For Chaz, that's going to be, like, a huge boost in his ego, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, Chaz, yeah, we don't, we don't want to want to with Chaz. And it's going to be like, it's what we call like a bully, bully status. Like, so now he can blow through here like when nobody really say nothing to him. I respect it, but I just wish he would be more, more like patient, you know what I mean? Just more settled down. To me, three fights in a week, three fights in a day still wouldn't even be too much. At the end of the day, the money, the power, and the muscle are all about making his place at Ross, setting his reputation so he could do time on his own terms. Before punishment, every inmate has a pre-hearing to see if there's enough evidence for a disciplinary trial. Reynolds, you're charged with Rule 19, which is fighting with or without a weapon, including the instigation of or the perpetuation of a fight. Are you guilty or not guilty? I'm not guilty. What happened? Man, only I was at the, uh, downstairs at the card table. Yeah, I see uh, the one dude that was all bloody chasing uh, inmate Mosley. Then that's thing I know, inmate Mo him and inmate uh, Mosley on the top range fighting. They tell everybody lockdown. I locked down about 10 minutes later. They come get me, but they searched me. I ain't had no, it was blood everywhere. I ain't had no blood on me, no scars, no nothing. So they told you that you, your name had come up? Yeah, that, that, yeah, they told me my name came up. There were no witnesses of Juice fighting, but he's a self-described troublemaker and thief. Since the officer has named you in the conduct report as one of the participants, you will have to go to RIB. Do you want any witnesses? Stanley Carr. What do you expect Carr to testify to? I mean, that I was at the, the, the car table whenever they was upstairs fighting. I was at the car table until when they told us to lock down. All right, young man. You in just a little bit. There's enough suspicion for a trial, and his will be later this week. Prison is, in of itself, community. 
with a pecking order and a natural disaster that takes place every day. Every day somebody gets in a fight, every day somebody goes to a hole, every day somebody gets extorted. In a facility of over 2,000 convicted felons, there are bound to be rule breakers. And when they get caught, they come to segregation, the jail within the prison. Inmates call it the hole, where they await trial and serve out their sentences for anything from fighting to disrespecting officers. This is where time slows to a crawl. I'm in prison for a case I did, but I'm in the hole for something I ain't got a The better part of 23 hours a day are spent locked down in a cell. Inmates get one hour a day for exercise, either indoors or outside in cages. Any movement requires an officer and a set of handcuffs. How long an inmate stays is determined by the Rules and Fraction Board, or RIB, which serves as both judge and jury. Sir, on the above date and time, ICO Montgomery was conducting a cell search in 4B cell 211 when I found an eight inch shank hidden beneath the bottom dresser drawer. When I just moved in here, he told me he been knew the knife was in there. They hear the charges, determine guilt, and choose a punishment. You pled not guilty, the panel in fact found you guilty. The panel believes that a homemade weapon was found in your cell. Penalty to be imposed is 15 days disciplinary control, no credit time sir. It isn't a science, but it's the next best thing to a proper trial. How you doing, young man? You stand right there. On deck for today's board are Frisco Mosley and Juice Reynolds, the two accused of attacking and robbing Donald Smith. First up is Mosley, the man seen fighting with Smith on the tier. So what was this uh, entire incident over? I just told you, dude, just came running on the top range, like, and threw a punch at me, and I'm like, what the So why would he come out, just run up, up, up on you and swing on he you like that? He was Did you hit him? I mean, apparently. The panel found you guilty of this. Based on your self-admission of swinging back on M.A. Smith after he swung on you, the panel find you guilty of the Rule 19 violation. It's a clear verdict. 10 days of segregation for fighting. But Juice is a bit more complicated. He is here on a tip, not on solid evidence. How do you wish to plead this Rule 19 violation? Not guilty. Uh, downstairs. I was at the uh, card table playing. Next thing I know, I see the uh, inmate Smith fight uh, chasing the other inmate. He was chasing him on the top range. They start fighting on the top range. Uh, CO told us to lock it down. At the time this altercation took place, where exactly were you at? At the card table. When I seen him on the top, when he was chasing, dude around the top range, I was at the card table. Defendants in front of the board are allowed to call a witness to back up their story. But Juice's witness only muddies the waters. <clears throat> he has called you for a witness here today. I really don't know what happened. I was making something to eat. It was almost count on. I thought you was at the card table. Yeah. When, this, when that went down, it was almost count on. So where was you at when you was making something? Mike Microwave room. Microwave room? Mm -hmm. Where was he at at this time? He was in my cell. When the COs broke the hole, when they told everybody to start locking it down, that's when uh, everybody split from the table, and you know what I'm saying? People start making their food. But when you it, stated you was down there setting at a card table. Yeah, I, we, I was when it happened. Then when the COs told everybody break up, lock it down, that's when I went to the cell to get the bowls. And then right after that, I wanted to go lock down. I locked it straight down. His alibi seems unclear to the board. Is there anything else you wish to add? But just like in a real trial, with no concrete evidence, there is no guilt. M.A. Reynolds, the panel found you not guilty of Rule 19 <clears throat> violation due to insufficient evidence. So Juice is free to go. And that's an offshot there. Not guilty. Beat my charge like rock. You know what I'm saying? Beating a charge at RIB is a rare thing at Ross. Oh, I'm out of here. And today, Juice caught a lucky break. They believed it. They believed it. 
I thought it was gonna be worse than what it really was, though, because we was killing dude in the cell. Dude just had some exclusive George, and I, I had to have him. He, you know what I'm saying? Frito! Frito! They represent nothing to me, personally, just money. Ching Ching, when I seen them, the dollar signs, you know? The robbery was a setup, a successful hit by Juice and his crew. So my homeboy act like he was about to braid his hair. He opened up the door for me. I shut the door like, listen, I'm going to ask you one time, where them shoes at? He tried to play dumb, so I got to kick him in his face. <clears throat> Stomped him out. I guess he regained composure or whatever. So now we had to punish him again, stomp him out again, kicking him in his face, blah, blah, blah. He ran out chasing us. I thought he had a knife. So that's why I ran. I got to run on the top range. That's why when y'all came in, y'all ain't see me because I didn't get caught. It was the prison version of a perfect crime. Now he has other business to attend to, gathering the troops and tracking down the stolen sneakers. Who's at the door, bro? I don't know. Like I said, he's hoping to move the shoes, but first he has to find them. Who at? I don't know. No, that's dead. In prison, a new pair of Nike Jordans can sell for over two hundred dollars. Nobody on his crew seems to know where they are. Hey, I'm gonna tell you though, like, you know. Dale's the one who got him. How did Dale give him? Because Dale said Frisco was gonna get a part of it, you feel me? He got him. I guess somebody took it from Dale. Unless it was the inside, you feel me? I don't so know. Mm -hmm. While he was beating his case in the hole, he may have lost the spoils. It seems that even in prison, there's no honor among thieves. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to see where my product's at. Hey, I'm about to get all that straight right now, bro. I just got out. All right, I'm about to get all everything straight today, bro. That's why I ain't about to unpack nothing, for real. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be here, or y'all going to see me going back to the hole for another fight. I'm going all out for mine. For the last two months, Chaz has been trying to build a kind of future in prison, to set up an easier way to do his 20 years. But today, his past caught up with him. Pissed the off. Yesterday, I got a letter in the mail, the wrong kind of letter. I thought I was gonna get one from one of my little chicks or something. I got one from the state of Ohio. I gotta pay restitution. The letter is an order for Chaz to pay restitution to the victim he's convicted of shooting twice. And the debt is $20,000. Once it goes through, almost anything on his account from friends, family, or his $12 a month salary will go toward repayment. With no more money on his books, he can't run his store. In prison terms, Chaz is bankrupt. Without money, there's no survival in here. I won't be able to buy nothing, no hygiene, no nothing. And uh, they taking everything I get, whatever gets sent on there. So the money I got on there right now, they take it. You can't just hustle for nothing. They take my money, I won't be able to develop nothing at all. Piss me off, man. Take my money, I don't even did. There's one place he can go for help. Okay. Just grab a seat and sit there. And that's Ronald Dudas, 1A's jailhouse lawyer. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, you do want to object to the withdrawal of this money from your account. If you want to mark down due. Dudas is not a real lawyer. He's here on multiple charges, including fraud and corruption. As a white collar criminal at Ross, his prison hustle was offering legal advice to guys with nowhere else to turn. Well, here's what we're going to do. What I did was, I got a motion here for you, because I don't know what they gave you there. But I did this one up before for somebody. It's a motion to vacate payment of court costs, fines, restitution requirement. There's a 70, 30% chance of the court saying, no, we're not going to give this to you. We may have to file 
10 motions in the next three or four years. Mm -hmm. But it'll come to fruition at the end. So you don't want to have a whole lot of money until we answer this. I wouldn't have a whole lot coming in on your books. I got a couple hundred on there right now. You got a couple hundred on there now? So I should just spend a hundred at the store? Absolutely. Okay. And then next time, spend another hundred and get yourself all the hygiene and stuff that you need, buy extra, and keep that until we get this rectified. Uh, it'll work. With Dudas helping him appeal the restitution, Chaz will try to clear his account. This commissary might be my last one. Dudas told me, spend as much money as I can just in case they try to take my money. I mean, this could be my last time buying something that I can eat. There's a good chance he will spend the next 20 years broke. And for someone used to living the high life, that's a problem. You can't survive off of $9 a month. Just think about you being on the streets making make $9 a month. It's the same thing in here. What you gonna do for $9 a month? You gonna switch your game up. You gonna start robbing. It's gonna bring the real Chaz Ramon White out, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm get super violent. I ain't got no choice. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get super violent. Super greedy. Grimy is what I call it. I'm going to have to. They take my money. I mean, what else am I going to have? I'm going to have some money, like I told y'all earlier. I'm going to have some money in my pocket. I'm going to have some food in my box. For Chaz, prison poverty is not an option. And if he can't make his own money, there may be a new jailhouse robber at Ross. I guess that's the new respect you jump people or you go around stealing this stuff, I guess. Mm -hmm. Donald Smith is rethinking his own strategy for doing time. Now out of the infirmary, he's just been dealt another blow. Based on the evidence, he received a 15-day sentence for fighting. A punishment made worse by the news that Juice got off scot-free. That ain't right. I'm not going back on the compound on the 12th. I know if I go back out there, it ain't going to be right. You know, because things I got in my mind, things I do to these people, man, they do that to me. I will never go home. Smith knows that if he fights back, he could risk losing early release or get more charges. If he doesn't fight, he'll be an even bigger target for other robbers and gangs. I don't have to, I don't have to fight him, but I know when I see him, I will. I'm on the time, all right, man, I'm a, I don't want to get out. I don't need to go to another institution. That's what they could do. Send me in, anywhere else. Bring me up north somewhere, anywhere. He's asked for a transfer to another prison. The only way he feels he can survive Ross now is to leave. This isn't an experience that's going to go away. You know, it'll be over one day, but it won't go away. If you want easy time, you can make your time easy. If you want a hard time, you can make it hard. Segregation time is over for Donald Smith. But true to his word, he's staying put. Hey, Smith, you going to the compound? Huh? You going back to the compound? Nah, I'm a few I won't go back on the compound. I don't want to deal with these people. Plus, I don't want to see them dudes that attack me and rob me. You know what I'm saying? Because I see these dudes, they ain't going to be nice. Uh, the ticket reads at approximately 8.30 a.m. M.A. Smith, 595-724, refused to leave 5A. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Why did you refuse to come out? Um, I just, I don't know. I mean, I just um, I don't want to go back out to your compound. Why? Something going on out there? Yeah, a lot. That's why I don't want to go back out of your compound. Just turns for me institution. Would 
we, I don't have any control as to whether you get transferred or not. His request for a transfer is in, but if it doesn't go through, his remaining prison years may be here in the hole. They gonna, uh, they keep doing that stuff, man, what they doing, man, with young people, young people like that, man, around people like that, man. They get messed up, man. They ain't move slow back here, but like, you still study. Like, I got my Spanish book. I'm studying on my Spanish, you know, so. I'm back here, I'm gonna be back here for a while. And I like to just keep studying, you know, in my school. With all that has happened, Smith still looks to the future and prepares for a life back on the street. It's transfer time at Ross Correctional Institution when inmates board the buses once again to be reshuffled throughout the state. Some moves are expected, others are not. Troy Mary got word early this morning that he's off to another prison. The surprise transfer marks the end of his third stay at Ross and the start of a new chapter behind bars. It doesn't even matter whether it's Ohio State Penitentiary, it's Lucasville, it's Lebanon, it doesn't matter, you know, you, you are what you make of the time that you do. Turn around, face me. That's what it is to me. I have to hurry up now to get nowhere. I'm not going anywhere. I'm inside of a prison. I'm going inside of a prison on a van, and I want to go to another prison. Donald Smith is also heading out. After three months of self-imposed exile in the hole, his transfer request has come through. He's leaving Ross for another close security prison. There, he'll have a clean slate and the wisdom of the tough lessons learned here. I feel happy. <laughs> I'm out the hole, going somewhere new. Here, I was, I think I was a little too flashy with the things I had, you know, like I have drawings and stuff. Donald Smith. I was a target, I made myself a target. I'll be ready for another situation like this. I'll see it coming. Ain't gonna be much difference. It's still in prison. It's another prison. For inmates, surviving Ross means choosing your hustle. Obey the rules or break them. Join the game or break it apart. Here, the choices come fast, and the consequences even faster. We get preyed on. You know what I'm saying? We get prayed, don't kill us, get prayed for. Over in 4A, Juice Reynolds has settled back in. He's tracked down the shoes he stole from Smith and sold them for commissary. Everything under control, whole situation is good. Yep. Unpacked everything. I should be back in the compound for a little minute. It was gone, you know. As soon as I got it back, it was gone. For order to beat me, you gotta live in my shoes, you know what I'm saying? They living a, a simple life out there, you know what I'm saying? And inside the prison, it's, it's not the same. Kill or be killed. For now, Juice will hang back, but always with an eye out for his next mark. No, I can't keep nothing on me, you know. Police come in here and search. I'm gonna lay low for a little minute, though. My name's kind of hot right now, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just waiting till my name clear up, wait till things cool back down. Back to the basics. Across the north side in 1A, Chaz White is still fighting his restitution and taking stock of his situation. With no money on his books and a long sentence ahead, the street hustler is setting a new course behind bars. All I need is the wheel. I got the ink, I got the needle, I got the barrel. All I need is the wheel right here so I can hook my needle up to it. That's all I need. Got the battery so I can make a battery pair. He's building a crude tattoo gun, and he's almost open for business with another illegal way to make his commissary. Yeah. I guess it's either so I can get some tattoos or start shooting them, coming with a new hustle. Since these punk trying to take my money. 
So if any of y'all want to tell, I, I try. <laughs>